then I already got that there paint inside that crankcase and if you remember we done already broke that name tag off of there as always start with one piece and at this point I done already put that cylinder sleeve up in yander that's all and the last video if you remember said something about some assembly required well as you can see I did not break this one down a hundred percent a few parts that I already put together so we'll put them on there as a sub assembly with the side cover the cam side side cover installed on the engine it becomes apparent why you would want to mark those timing gears before installation well you can see them two dots on yonder but when you when you turn that cam it's it's readily it's readily visible when you when we put that crankshaft in there we want to line them two teeth up with that tooth on that there crankshaft that's the reason you do that it just makes life easy the comment was yeah get your pencil paper take notes the comment was this this gear right here on the crankshaft when when there right there is the marked tooth right there okay when you see it's not it's not matching up to anything that is marked on the uh, cam gear two to one will be the ratio whatever the number is for cycle engine okay when you uh, let's go to the same direction the this is the mark tooth comes around okay it will make this one right here will make a full revolution half revolution full revolution on this one and a half on that one this one over here has twice as many teeth as this one does but you see here's the mark okay the two marked on that gear is coming into and you see they make perfect mesh just a uh, uh, the the way you and, and 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 that's the only timing mark on this gear and that's the only two timing marks on that gear so once you set these two marks correctly then don't worry about this timing here and you can confirm this timing by a outside indicator which we'll talk about later but the reason the camera is rolling is side play on the crankshaft I'll show you something this this the this particular engine right here I measured it with the ruler got the little six inch scale out there and run it across through yonder and it is uh, one eighth of an inch right here from this bearing face actually it's from from that housing cast iron housing the Babbitt bearing is even up with that those two are even and this particular engine right here when when uh, when I got it it had uh, about one eighth of an inch side plate the the flywheels was out of adjustment on both sides to the amount where it could come over here and actually rub against this this housing and right in there you can see a shiny place where it was rubbing the Babbitt bearing and then right out here all of this wire rings around through there is it, it actually wore the number completely away it's uh, it's quite deep 
and that was because it was rubbing on this cast iron housing. That's the importance of centering the the crankshaft in, in in between. But if it if it goes if if there's play on this flywheel over here, and this is the spacer, and and you can that's where it would be at, and you can see that movement. This, this spacer should be up to, in this measurement right in yonder, that should be just a very few thousands. That's the importance of uh, centering up the crankshaft when you are assembling an engine, or if you have an engine and you can move your, your crankshaft sideways, then on this particular engine, and there's some other enclosed engines that it's even more important than this is, if it could be, I guess. Some open crankshaft engines has so much play here that it, uh, the only importance at that point is the rod bearing. And then that's the same case here. When, when you come that way, then you are actually pushing your rod that way and then when you come back you're pulling the rod this way in the in the on the wrist pin and that's the reason that they are side play on a wrist pin between the bushing and the piston itself side play quite important crankshaft installed in the engine and uh, the piston with the rings already put up on yonder and the rod uh, as always pre-fit the rod bearing with the right amount of shims on the workbench oh it'll save you some time and you'll end up with a much better job if you will pre-fit the rod we've got the right amount of shims in the top and the bottom just a matter of putting it up in yonder which we're going to get it done. Uh, one, uh, maybe it ain't a word of caution, it's just the way it works, is that hole in the, t and this, this is, igniter does have four rings. A new set of cast iron there, that bottom one right there, I done already put it down in that cellar, just see how much gap was in there. And it was the right amount, look it up. That hole in that piston right yonder, and if you look down in yonder on that rod, there's a boss with a hole in the top of it. And when that when that piston is in that engine going to and fro, the oil from the oiler gets down in that hole there and oils up the little end on your rod. That's the way that works. <laughs> Look at all these Coast Arkansas shot dogs, Sam.